choosing celebration breaking into free hey guys you're the soul you're the soul of our hearts memphis florida hey jenny Kari Ray, how goes it? Okay. Minnesota, Chicago, Minneapolis. What's the matter? You guys need join the valley? Good grief. Let's talk about it. Mobile, I know. I'm excited. I'm ready for Pensacola. It's coming up quick. South Carolina, Ohio. Miss Ohio, we had fun. North Florida. I got it. I can't do it. You can feel it, huh? Man, no pressure. Okay, I'm going to give you guys um, a second to go ahead and share it with your friends and contacts. I invite you to do that. I appreciate it. Swipe, swipe, share. Hearts are the, yeah, you're on. You're like, this is awesome. I'm on point. So if you're on the replay and stuff like that, that's why they do that. Um, thank you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sharing. Bass drop. I'll come to Connecticut. Let's do it. Let's set it up. Aubrey and Frisco. Great energy. Good. Are you new to the scope? If you're new, if you're new to my scopes, put a one so that I know. Uh, if you say great energy, you probably aren't used to my scopes and you're like, oh my gosh, this guy's like really awake. This is it from four in the morning on. Uh, number one. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm excited. Thank you guys for getting on. If you have not gotten on my scopes before uh, and you are new, awesome. Look at all the new. Look at all the newbies. You guys are great. You don't even know what's about to go down. You don't even know what's about to happen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Spokane, of course, of course, I come to Spokane. I'll come. I'll come to you guys. Let's do it. Let's set it up. Um, one of the things that's the most fun for me, of anything, even beyond doing this, is being able to come see you guys in person and show up in places. Either y'all show up here. I had scopers that showed up this morning. It was awesome. Or I go somewhere to go lecture and go um, spread the good word, and um, and you're there, and I get to meet you. It's awesome. I mean, that's like the best thing ever. So if you don't know who I am, I am uh, Dr. Jim Bob Haggerton. I'm a crazy chiropractor from Texas, uh, and I'm crazy about function, and I'm crazy about teaching you guys. Um, how the body's created and that it's created to function what? 100% of the time. It's created for perfect function 24 7, 365. Okay? Hashtag WWC. That's right. I was just going to say we need to do that hashtag. That's this weekend. Tomorrow morning, I am jumping on a jet plane and headed to Colorado to uh, catch a um, car to Wyoming. And we're going to have a blast. I need to bottle my energy up. That's right. Uh, it's like the Light of Alien deal. If you guys know what that is, put them one or a thumbs up, and y'all are all geeks just like me. The light of it in deal. Use it in dark places. Anything? Anybody get that? Anybody get the movie reference? Okay, my wife's embarrassed right now that I'm making a movie. Thank you. Thank you. Another geek that knows what movie that's off of. I love it. Um, so you guys are like, I know this. I know the light. Um, yep. Okay. Let's talk about this. All right. So I wanted to do a scope today. Thumbs up. You guys are going, okay, you're a geek. I know it. Um, I know it's going to be a blast. Here, here's what I want to do today, and I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk about this, and I'll engage in, engage out. So don't think. No, we haven't even started, Jennifer. Don't think that I'm ignoring you if I don't answer you right away. Because as I start, I want to give you guys the meat. Then we'll discuss. I'll give you some meat. Then we'll discuss, and then at the end, I'll take some questions. Um, I, I, if I took every comment and I looked at this all the time, you guys know me. I'd be, I'd be chasing this all day. We wouldn't get anything done, yos, at all. So. Um, here's what I want to do. Um, first off, because today I wanted to do one on this because of all the heavy scopes we've done the last four days. You guys have got amazing questions on stuff that I want to teach you on. Um, like this last four days, we did, we just did PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. We did fibromyalgia, which is huge, and so many people suffer with it. We did anxiety, um, a seasonal affective disorder, panic disorder, and depression. Uh, and we did uh, postpartum depression. We did those four back to back to back. That's a lot. And that's a lot of stuff. And I did a scope that weekend on um, going through your drawers and dumping, like dumping out, be brave and dump the stuff out of your drawers. Uh, the drawers in your house, the drawers in your soul, the drawers in your life. That's a lot of stuff. So today, I want to go through a little bit with you. We can't understand that. Uh, and so um, I want to go with you guys on like 
How do you get through? How do you find joy in the valley? How do you um, how do you go through and choose it? Because we went through four things over the last four scopes that are heavy things that when you're in the middle of them, it feels like the never ending. It feels like the never ending valley that you're never going to get out of. So you know, I've talked to you guys about how to get through the valley, how to um, how to like um, how to can you see the past ones? Great question. Keep me on point, people. All right, new to this. Past ones, I load them all to YouTube. So go to family-wellness.com. The color dude is Jacob Adamo. Hey, Sarah, post Jacob's website. Uh, Jacob's wife, Sarah Adamo, is on here. That's who we're doing the um, class with. That's the website. Go to there. You can go to the YouTube channel. Uh, and so Jacob Adamo, uh, that's his. It's uh, jacobadamo.com. Sarah will post it in just a second. Um, and that's who we're going to be teaching with. I'm going to be teaching with in Wyoming. And who we're going to be, there it is. There she is. Um, thank you, who we're going to be um, going through. Now, Will, we're talking about um, um, how we're scoping it or what we're doing and all that. We, I don't know how much we're doing or not, so no promises. Uh, but one of the things we're doing this weekend is I'm going to team up with Jacob, and we're going to teach a communication and health lecture based on the personality colors and the typing mixed with the brain balancing and the neurology and the stress associated with that and with relationship and communication and show you how this is way more, this is way more, it goes way beyond blue, red, yellow, uh, left brain, right. I mean, it's, it's generational and, and there's so many things that are involved with this. So that's what I want to talk about today is like, you know, how you, how, how are you like, how are you walking through this valley? How do you keep going when there seems to be no end? Um, and what is it that you have to hold on to um, in order to make sure that you're getting to the end? Like, what, what do you do? Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things. First off, the thing that I want you to think about first, the thing about, that you want to think about first, yes, the thing you want to think about first is what is your valley? Like, you got to kind of identify where you're at. To be able to get out of where you are, you have to know where you currently are at so that you know where you need to go. Huge. Where are you? Where are you right now? When you get on Periscope and you start, a, you start to do a scope, there's a line at the top that says, what are you seeing right now? And I love that because I think it's so prophetic. It goes, what are you seeing right now? What is right in front of you? Because when you're in that valley and you're working through a health problem, a relationship problem, a loss of a family member, like when we, we lost our third child last year after birth and going through that whole experience still, uh, when you're when you're walking through that, how do you? But like, you can only see right there. You can only see one step ahead. But you're looking everywhere, and you're in the middle of this fog because this fog lays down on top of your entire world, and you can't see very far. And how do you? How do you get a big picture? What What is it that is able to get you over it and get you that way? Okay, like like what is it? Like what does it say in scripture to gets us to that to that to that point? Okay, so identify where you are identify, identify the valley. Like what is your valley? Where are you? What valley are you walking through? So that you know, okay, I'm in the valley of pain. I'm in the valley of depression. I'm in the valley of grief. I'm in the valley of relationship issues. I'm in the valley of marriage problems. I'm in the valley of divorce. I'm in the valley of abuse. I'm in the valley. Do you see what I'm saying? Like put a name on it so you know where it is. So you know what to do. How do you fight an enemy that you don't know what it is? There's no way. If you have no idea what's in front of you, you can't do anything about it. You don't know what armor to put on. You don't know how to defend yourself. And you just curl up in a ball and you get on the floor because you don't know what's coming at you. When you really go through and you journal down or you pray through and you get specific and you go, you know what? And there may be a lot of times, a lot of times it's just in the valley. There's a ton of stuff. That's right. Sometimes it's a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's like, everything. It just feels like it. But there are specific things that you know, you're like, okay, this is the one I'm in. So this is where I'm at. And what am I going to get out of it? And what do I need to be focusing on? Okay. All right. So the first, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of verses and then I'm going to let you listen to a specific part of the song, the song of the day uh, that is huge, huge. Okay. We're going to look at that. Okay. So first verse that I want you guys to write down and I want you to look this up. So here's how I look at verses in the Bible. Here's how I take them apart. I take a verse and I look at that verse and I go, okay. And then I pull up the chapter and then I pull up concordances and I pull up references and I rip that verse apart. Good morning. 
I rip that verse apart and I get into it and I'm like, I want to know what was the scenario happening around that time frame? What's going on? Who is it? Where are they at? All that kind of stuff. And this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do with this. I'm not going to go through all that with you on both because I'm not going to, you know, go long time. This is a quick scope. I want to give you this really, really, really quick. Um, and so what I want you to do is I want you to, um, I want you to really think through and I want you to really pour in and go, okay, what, what is it? Like, what is this thing? So the first one is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. So 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Now, that whole verse is about giving thanks, but there's something specific in the verse. There's something specific in the verse that I want you to go to. That's a great verse, too. You can do anything. The he who gives you strength. There's that. You, you can totally go to that one. But this is the one I want to talk about. These are the two that I got today for y'all. So let me give you just two, okay? Uh, one, uh, when you look at 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the verse says, it says, give thanks. The next three words is key. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. All three letters that are rough. All give thanks when Ellie is doing amazing at school. Give thanks when the business is going well. Give thanks when your OGV goes up. Give thanks when it goes down. Give thanks when you don't come home from the hospital with your baby. Give thanks when the prayers that you thought were going to be answered were answered differently. And your friend's no longer here. Give thanks when you lose that deal. Give thanks when you get the deal. Do you see what I'm saying? Give thanks in all circumstances. And then after the semicolon, because, oh, ouch, I know. I'm like, oh, and it's just me. I'm like, I'm not like, this is no preaching. This is us discussing. Okay? Simple, crazy hard, right? Crazy hard. But I'm going to show you the difference on how this neurologically works. And this is... I love when, like, you can, well, you can't know all this, but I love how you can take scripture and you go, this is the neurology of it, and this is physiology because of how he created it, and I'm going to show you how that ties in. I'm going to show you how it ties in to this whole thing. Give thanks in all. You know how many of you guys skip over the three-letter words, all? All circumstances. The semicolon happens, which means you go, this one, this is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. First, 1,000 gifts by Ann Voskamp will wreck you. It is awesome. It's really good. I'm not even talking about that, but that's awesome. You should all read this. We should read it every Thanksgiving. Every November, you should go through that book again because it's amazing. 1,000 gifts by Ann Voskamp. It's so good, right? Okay. So in all, those three letters is the key to getting through the valley because if you're giving things when it's good, you got to give thanks when it's not or when you don't think it is because it's going to get good again. It's going to change. You're going to get to another valley. You're going to get to another mountain. Then you're going to go in a valley. Then you're going to get to a mountain and you're going to get to a next spot that the Lord's taking you to, whether it's a new health um, goal, um, it is a new business goal, it, any of those things. You're going to get there. There's a couple of key things to do, but it says give thanks in all circumstances for, okay, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Woo! So it says, it says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Okay. When they were saying this, this is the last part of a whole message that they were giving the Thessalonians. And it's talking about uh, esteeming people. It says, and esteem people very highly in love because of their work, be at peace amongst yourselves, Admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. This is the this is the this is the passage. This is why I want you to look at the chapter. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil. It's given them the whole thing. Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. That's that's uh, verse 17, 16, 17. Then it says, give thanks in all circumstances. All. All circumstances. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys. Oh, you know, one of the one song I want you to look up. I mean, I'm going to show you different how uh, the next song ties into this whole topic. But um, one song I want you to look up is I want you to look up "Love Came Down" by Brian Johnson. Uh, "Love Came Down" by Brian Johnson. I may even look it up for you again. But "Love Came Down" by Brian Johnson. There's two verses in that song. 
It's one of my favorite songs always. There's one of my favorite worship songs ever written, um, the acoustic version. And it says, there's two, there's two ones. Love Came Down, Brian Johnson. That's it. From out of Bethel Church in California. And the thing that the song shows is your posture and what you should be doing in every walk of life. The first verse is, when my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, um, I hold on to what is true, though I can't see. That's what the verse says. Uh, and it says, um, and it goes through like when things are rough. And it says, I lift these hands in faith, I will believe. That's what it says in the rough times. I lift these hands in faith, I will believe. Then it says the next verse is when things are going good. It says when, when blessings come my way, uh, and it's talking about when, um, when all these blessings, like when blessings come my way, da, 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 da. Then he says, I lift my hands in praise, I will believe. It's the same. The posture is the same. He's giving thanks in both because that's the will. Okay, that's the will. All right, now watch this. This is going to tie in to the title. So how to find joy in the, uh, in the valley. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to give you, the, I'm going to give you one thing you have to do. Um, all right, so in Nehemiah, if you read Nehemiah, Nehemiah is a fascinating whole book because the whole book is all, they're under attack, man. I mean, they're in the middle. They're trying to rebuild the city and they're under attack. They've got, uh, they've got attack from every corner and people are attacking the city. They're trying to rebuild the wall. They're getting murdered. They're getting all this stuff. And Nehemiah is leading them and is leading them to do all this. So the people are scared. Like the people are like trying to do their jobs. Uh, they're scared. Like, and they come out and in this chapter, in chapter eight, um, they are um, going through the book of the law and they're going through the laws and they're trying to like figure out where they need to be, right? And what they need to do. And the people are freaking out. Like they're weeping. They're so scared. They, they have so much fear. They're weeping at the wall, listening to the prophets and listening to the scribes read through. When they, when they found the book of the law and they, they read it, this is Nehemiah chapter eight, and they read it, they're weeping because they know they can't do it. They know they're, they're like, we can't do this. Like, we can't do this. Um, yeah, when I understand, I will choose you. I will trust you. Yeah, that that group, Brian and Brady Terwelt is awesome too. Brian and Katie. But in Nehemiah 8, they're weeping. They're freaking out. You know, like the whole thing. Then he says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, he talks about the joy of, and he says, there's all this stuff. It says, it says, for this day is to be holy, Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. And it explains why. It says, do not mourn or weep. It says, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. They were weeping. Like they're like, and what the weeping is, is it wasn't weeping with happiness. They were weeping with despair. They were like, we're giving up. I, I'm giving up. Like I'm crying because I can't get through this pain. I can't get through this cancer. I can't get through this lung problem. I can't get through this business downturn. I can't get through this valley. I can't do, what is it? What is your valley? I can't get through this. And they're weeping because they're broken and they're despairing over what they see as a completely hopeless situation. They're weeping. And he says, he said, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. Help everyone, make everybody uh, eat stuff and, and, and get your strength up. And it says, for this day is holy to the Lord and do not be grieved. Do not be grieved. And it says, do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Man, where's another bite? Let's drop two. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy. Now, the thing about the Lord's nature and one of the things he wants to teach you in your valley is... In order to feel the strength, you've got to choose the joy. In order to, do you know, like, here's a perfect example. Do you know that in order to get stronger, in order to work out, in order to get stronger, you have to actually lift the weight. you got to pick it up. Are you seeing this? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Do you all hear this? In order to increase strength, you have to what? Pick up the weight. you got to pick up the bar. you got to pick up the dumbbell. In order to experience the strength, you've got to grab it. It's not going to jump on you. It's not just going to lay on you. You're not just going to step in it. You have to choose it. You have to pick it up. You got to pick it up. 
You've got to pick up the joy and you've got to make a conscious effort. And Cindy and I can tell you that is the hardest possible thing the Father has told us to do. Hardest. Right, babe? She's on here. It's the hardest thing every day to get up and choose joy on having two of our own kids here and one adopted when we know we don't have a fourth and he should be here. That's the roughest. That is the roughest thing to do. It is the hardest and it is the most simple move. You wake up and it's the first thing, right? This is my, this is my bride. This is my better half. It is the worst possible, worst possible thing, hardest possible thing to do every day. Every minute. Because this isn't an all day thing. Because this isn't, this isn't like a five minute battle. We're not in a skirmish, people. We're in a war with our health. We're in a war with our diet. We're in a war with everything. So there is no break in the battle. You're not taking a break. You're not laying down. Now, you may have to take a knee and someone else is standing in front of you um, and they're defending you. But there is no sitting back because the other side's not backing off on you. You're pressing in all the time. And you're always in this. So it's constantly choosing every... That's why it says... Pray without ceasing. In Thessalonians, it says, it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing because you have to give thanks or the alternative is what? Choosing to sit down in your valley, like choosing to um, let yourself get buried in the quicksand, choosing to own it, choosing to put the jersey on of whatever you think you're in. That's the alternative. You either are choosing joy and you're choosing thanks, or by default, you're choosing despair, and you're choosing fear, and you're choosing darkness, and you're choosing all this stuff. Yes, stand firm. When they talk about the um, the armor of the Lord, they say, put all, all this armor, it says this and this, 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 this. And at the very end, in Ephesians, it says, Ephesians 6, it says, and then when you have done all, stand. Right, Angie? It says, when you've done all, we think we got to do all these things. No, there's a certain part of weathering the attack and weathering the storm and weathering the 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 you know the barbs or whatever's coming at you in the middle of the valley. Stand, stand in it. Then you've got to move. In battle, if you get attacked by something in battle and you get hit by something, right, Angie? When you get hit by something in battle and you defend and you grab your shield, which is a part of the armor. Okay, it's not weakness to have a shield. It's not weakness to duck your arm and duck your head and to protect yourself and to protect your family. It's not weakness. It's exactly, he loves us and he created it this way. Stand, even when you don't want to, even when you don't have the strength to, even when you have no desire. You stand, you block it, but the next move is advancement. You have to advance. You have to move forward and you have to step ahead and walk out of this valley and choose the joy choose to be thankful because there's things that you will get after walking through the valley because you were joyful, because you were thankful, because you were faithful, you would have never gotten if that valley didn't exist. And uh, I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that in order for Cindy and I to have a marriage as strong as we have now, we had to, we didn't have to, we walked through we didn't have to, but we, we ended up walking through a horrible valley for over two or three years uh, in our marriage to walk through that, to get to the point we are now. I hate that, but I'm thankful now, and I was thankful when we really started healing. I was thankful in the middle. I'm thankful now because of all the things that we've learned and what we have now, because we would have never had this now if we hadn't have been through that then. Um, I hate that now my appreciation from my, for my kids and me loving every annoying thing they do had to come out of losing one. I hate that. I hate it. I hate every second of that. But the joy in the middle and the faithfulness in the middle is why the things on this side are so sweet. You've got to keep walking. Choose it and then choose to move. If you can't walk, someone pick them up and carry them. Put them in a wheelchair spiritually and push them through the valley. Put them on a sled, drag them out of that valley. Someone's gotta go in and get them. Someone's gotta go in and help them out, right? 
We've got to get out of there. Okay. Now I'm going to end up with one thing. I'm going to I want to show you the words to this song, and then I'm going to close this off on this, and I'm going to let you go because this is already a little bit longer scope than I wanted. Quick scope, half hour. All right. Okay. So song of the day on this is Joy from Ren Collective. Okay. So. I want you guys to listen to the words at this part and where they're choosing the joy and why they're choosing the joy and in what things they're choosing the joy. Okay, you ready? Let's listen to this for a second and then we'll close it off. Right? Just so you don't forget, let's remind you. In that valley. Running. Moving. Right? That. That. I'm running. Put your running shoes on. Put your hiking boots on and get moving and choose it. That's how you find it. The, the way you find joy is not in waiting for it to poke its head out um, like a bunny rabbit in the valley. Like, oh, look at the little rabbit of joy. I'm going to grab it. You can't. You go dig it up and you go find it and you put it on and you keep putting it on even when it doesn't feel like it. And you choose choose to have joy. Love you guys. Have a good rest of the day. I'll scope tomorrow from Wyoming or from the airport one. Uh, I'll get in. You've got to find it. That's right. Uh, and uh, I'll let you guys kind of know what's going on. Uh, we'll scope again tonight. Um, Cindy and I are going to go out to dinner. And so we'll probably scope about uh, dinner and like choosing things on the, the sugar detox. Um, and we'll keep going. Uh, but we're here. We're here. We're here to help you keep walking, that's it. Just keep walking, man. Like this is, this is simple. Choosing joy is simple, but it's the hardest thing you're ever gonna do. Love you, keep walking.